Hey, it's Wednesday, July 3rd, coming to you again from the road. We're tracking Major Hurricane Barrel on approach to the island of Jamaica. You can see the outline of the island right there. And the remnants of the eye of Barrel, which it's still there, just cloud-filled. You can see the little warm dimple in the center of the satellite image right at the end. It's been progressively degrading as we've talked about the conditions for the hurricane becoming more hostile to it. And so we've seen a gradual but steady weakening trend over the last 24 hours. Maximum winds have been coming down, central pressure has been rising, and the intercourse structure has been progressively decaying. We've seen even at times only a partial eye wall in these deep convective cloud tops on the north side. In the last hour it has made another run at closing that eye wall off. So the hurricane is still displaying some resilience here to the hostile conditions, uh, but it is not yet through them and for at least the next day conditions will be doing battle with the hurricane and how well it resists uh, will determine a lot about its future. But for right now, it's about Jamaica. And in the recon data from the aircraft here, we can see the track of the center fixes from the plane over the last series of orange dots, showing a generally west-northwestward track, slight bend toward the north at the end. But you really like this track if you're in Kingston. Yesterday's official forecast was a little closer to the southeastern coastline of Jamaica. And so to see it down here, just a couple dozen miles more offshore, you know, that really helps. So the northern eye wall is officially uh, avoiding uh, the big city of Kingston at the moment. Now, as the motion continues, it will get closer to the western end of Jamaica. So if you look at the Cuban radar here, we can see where the eye is now. And so again, that northern eye wall where the very strongest winds are over 100 miles an hour, that is staying to the south of Kingston proper, but it is likely going to scrape at least a portion of the southwestern and southern coastlines of Jamaica. Thankfully, less populated areas, but nonetheless, if you live here, be aware the extreme winds of Barrel may in fact come ashore. So this is going to continue like this, and how close of a scrape it is, you know, will determine how much land interaction interferes with the, the eye wall. We might see some weakening due to the passage by Jamaica. A lot of the hurricane's primary inflow is coming in at the surface over Jamaica at this point, and to the extent that the core rubs up against the mountains here, that is going to frictionally dissipate some of the hurricane's energy. So that's going to add to the struggles that the hurricane is going through. But it's still a powerful and dangerous storm. This recon data shows in these bright pinks here in salmon-colored wind barbs, you know, these are winds still a category three, maybe at times category four strength. So about 130 miles per hour maximum measured by the plane in recent passes through the northern eye wall. This is the water vapor satellite animation showing barrel right here to the south of Jamaica. And compared to yesterday, we are seeing now a little bit of resistance to the upper level cirrus on the northwestern side of the storm. There is that tut or upper level trough that we've been talking about anchored over Cuba, draped across the northwestern Caribbean Sea, and that is starting to impart the maximum levels of wind shear that the hurricane is likely to encounter throughout its life, possibly around 30 knots of total shear right now, much of it focused in the mid-levels of the atmosphere, but you can now see clearly the right-hand side of the storm has more cloud debris than the western side. So that western shear having an impact, it's getting in there and messing with the eye wall. And so we are seeing that steady weakening. You could see on the recon data that the pressure value has been rising steadily throughout the flight. Now going forward, the interaction of barrel with Jamaica and with this upper level trough will determine a lot about where it hits the Yucatan and how strong it will be on arrival in the Yucatan. First, we're going to be talking about it moving close by to the Cayman Islands. The stronger the hurricane remains, possibly a, a hair farther north is where it will track. So if it's strong as it passes by Jamaica, bigger risk to Grand Cayman and the islands to the northeast there. If it weakens dramatically as it's passing by the island of Jamaica, maybe it deviates just a hair farther toward the south and also weakens weakening the storm winds on that north side. So a couple of details left to iron out for the Cayman Islands, but a hurricane warning is in place as this is likely to pass pretty close by to you. You can see here on the GFS that is, you know, way too close. And certainly uh, the hurricane force wind field would intersect at least Grand Cayman on a track like that. Now we mentioned Jamaica itself. The topography may disrupt the storm some. And this, this tut, this upper level trough feature outlined in yellow colors here is going to remain to the north of the storm imparting westerly shear. But at some point, this uh, blue bubble, if you will, of hurricane outflow is going to push into the tut 
and cause it to weaken and eventually split into two pieces. So as this comes toward the Yucatan, you'll see that one piece of the tut ends up moving toward the west and the rest of the upper trough is kind of way off to the east here, effectively splitting it into two. Eventually, this is going to lead to wind shear values decreasing. And the other reason is that the, the low-level trade winds very strong beneath the storm in the Central Caribbean, it's going to be moving out of those. So as it approaches the Yucatan Peninsula, trade winds will slacken near the surface, and that will also lower the shear value. So conditions will be maximum hostile for the storm in this part of its journey past Jamaica and the Cayman Islands, but past the Caymans, things get a little less hostile. So depending on how ripped up the core structure of barrel has become at that point, it may have a chance at re-strengthening slightly before landfall on the Yucatan, but it really depends if it has the core structure left over in order to do that. Uh, right now, most models do indicate that barrel will likely remain at around hurricane intensity at the time of that second landfall in Jamaica. And I can show you briefly here kind of what the high resolution hurricane models think. You can see that it right now has a pressure of about 956 on the model, max winds of 120 knots. As it moves by the Cayman Islands, it's still a hurricane but weaker, category two on this particular model run. And then you can see it approach the Yucatan Peninsula and begin to re-strengthen a little bit. And it's up to still category two intensity, but a little stronger than it was 24 hours before around or just before landfall there south of Cozumel. Now things have varied from run to run, so the run before that was weaker, only a category one hurricane. The run before that was stronger again, so you can see there's been some dynamic variability in the modeling and that's all up to how well the structure of the storm holds together in the face of the vertical shear and the topography of Jamaica. So some uncertainty for the Yucatan, but expect a hurricane here. And I believe there is at least a hurricane watch up for you guys right now. I'll just look ahead and check. It's actually a hurricane warning now from a northern Belize up to Cancun. So that whole segment of Mexican coastline is now under a hurricane warning. Now, speaking of the, the long-term track here, we, we expect the landfall in the Yucatan to be somewhere between, uh, you know, Chetumal and Cozumel. And from that point forward at the lower end of the plot here, it's going to cross over the Yucatan Peninsula. And how much land interaction it has depends on how far north the landfall is. If it's closer to Cozumel, it may pass over less land mass than if it crosses over a little bit farther to the south and goes over the whole breadth of the Yucatan. But during that process, it is going to weaken quite a bit. You'll see here on the half, say, for example, that the inner core does broaden out after the crossing, and you can see it emerges as likely a tropical storm here. And so it has weakened quite a bit. Most models, of course, agree on this. It's passing over land for at least 12 to 18 hours. That's going to happen. And then on the other side, it may have a chance to re-strengthen over the Gulf of Mexico. Now, if we look at the, the GFS we'll see that conditions, although they improve over the Gulf, it's not clear how optimal they will be. Once the storm has crossed over, this remnant tut cell, this upper level low on the western side, may still be imparting some southerly or southwesterly wind shear on the storm. And that depends on how strong the storm is leading up to the, and crossing the Yucatan, because the stronger the storm is, the more it will be able to push this upper level low out of the way toward the west. You'll see that on some previous runs, it has pushed it to a different degree than the current run. And so depending on how close that is, that will determine how wind shear values evolve over the Gulf. So some uncertainty there, and also with its structure after crossing the Yucatan, if it's a tighter circulation after crossing, it'll be more easy for it to re-intensify if it's really broadened out and maybe some dry air gets in, then it would be a slower re-intensification process. And then it comes down to the track. And if we look at the mid-level steering flow on the GFS, this is the 500 millibar chart for Saturday morning. This is where barrel would be on the model right about here. And the whole issue with this track forecast in four to five days is that this, this steering ridge over the southeastern U.S. that forces it across the Yucatan in the first place, that's going to weaken due to this inbound trough over the northern plains in the Midwest. You can see that comes swinging in and it starts moving closer to the Ohio Valley by Saturday morning and you can see a break in the ridge over Texas. And so now there's this lane of flow that's directed more toward the northwest, more towards the U.S., and whether the hurricane follows that belt of flow 
determines on its is determined by its latitude. So if the storm crosses far enough to the south, it will probably not be far enough north to move into this weakness, and it will just continue moving westward into an area like Tampico, Mexico. But if the storm comes up far enough, it could just continue gaining latitude and eventually move into, say, southern Texas. And so models are split between that kind of range of outcomes. And it's complex because, as we just mentioned, it's not clear how strong the storm will be here or how primed for reintensification it will be. You know, at this time, it's going to be uh, in a place where the steering flow evolves with height. So if I take a, a cross or a sounding around this vortex right now, you'll see that there's easterly flow in the low levels right here. And so if the storm is weak and has trouble reintensifying after crossing the Yucatan, it's going to continue towards the west-northwest and toward Mexico, but the steering flow aloft is more toward the north, more toward Texas. And so the stronger the storm is after crossing the Yucatan, the more north it will go. So there's that wrinkle, but there's other wrinkles uh, because this trough right here is just one short wave of two. There's a second one that comes into Montana during the weekend and comes in and digs the trough again over the Great Plains. And the timing of arrival and how deep that short wave digs, the second one, over the weekend, Sunday and Monday, will determine whether this lane northward stays open. And you can see that on the GFS, the storm has moved into northern Mexico already by this time on late Sunday night. But the relative timing of when the hurricane arrives and when this trough, the second one digs in, will play a role in the final stages of the track. For example, if the storm is slower, then it has more time to turn toward the north before moving ashore. And so then Texas would be the more likely landfall rather than Mexico, as an example. So there's some sensitivity here. And if you look at the trough on Saturday morning, there has been a slight tendency on the base of the trough for a little bit of a farther ex farther southward extension. You can see this 588 line through central Oklahoma, and it sinks just a little bit farther south into southern Oklahoma and Arkansas on these runs. And so little changes in how deep this trough digs, both the first one and the second one, could end up mattering for the track of barrel over the Gulf. The European model kind of paints a similar picture here. Here you have one shortwave coming in, number two comes in out of Canada during the weekend, and this is where Beryl is, and it is also of the mind that this will come northwest but move into nor northern Mexico, just like where the GFS is, so the two models agree on this particular run, but you can see the European has been shifting farther north, whereas two days ago it was down here, yesterday at this time it was here, and now it's up here. So there's been some shifting going on, and it's going to be sensitive again to what these troughs are doing, and what Beryl is doing, how strong the storm is, and exactly where it crosses the Yucatan Peninsula and starts its journey across the Gulf. So bottom line here, if you're in eastern Mexico or Texas, you know, keep an eye on this storm just in case you don't want to be caught off guard. There is a chance for either region to get the final landfall of the storm once it crosses the Gulf. This is the GFS Ensemble, kind of illustrating a reasonable range of outcomes here. Uh, the Ensemble mean line is a little bit misleading, but the average track is kind of toward the Rio Grande Valley here. Some of the members even have trouble redeveloping over the southern Gulf and just drift westward into the Veracruz or Tampico region. Others into northern Mexico, generally the weaker members that crossed the Yucatan farther south. And then the stronger members that cross farther north, they're the ones that end up hitting the United States. So that's kind of what we're dealing with here. And we won't know everything about those details until we actually see this approaching the Yucatan and then crossing the Yucatan here in a couple of days. This is the NHC official forecast, again passing by just south of Jamaica, hurricane warning there. Thankfully, we already know it could have been worse. We could have had a direct hit on Kingston. We're not getting that, thankfully, but really heavy weather is likely occurring there as we speak, and the eyewall could still impact the southwestern and southern portion of the island, so hoping everyone stays safe in Jamaica today. Hurricane warning for the Cayman Islands, and especially Grand Cayman, is going to be at risk as it will be closest to the storm core. As barrel passes by, it could still be a major hurricane by this time. So Thursday morning, that's when it's expected to be passing by with winds of over 115 miles per hour on the official forecast, and then weakening to a Category 1 or 2 hurricane prior to crossing the Yucatan Peninsula. Right now, we're kind of narrowing down on between Chetu Mall and the island of Cozumel is kind of where most of the models are showing the landfall. 
So if you're in Belize, you know, you're feeling okay about this. As long as we don't see a shift toward the south, uh, you would be on the weaker side of the storm. The south side will have less wind than the north side. There is a tropical storm warning in northern Belize and a tropical storm watch over the northern half of Belize as well. But right now, you're feeling pretty okay about this trek, but be prepared just in case. If you're in Cancun, you really don't want to see any north northward shift here. On this track verbatim, Cancun would avoid the eye wall, but we could see some nudging. So just be aware of that and be prepared for the worst just in case. Hurricane warning is up for you guys as well. You can see further weakening as it crosses the landmass to a tropical storm in the Gulf of Mexico and then slight re-strengthening back into a hurricane prior to landfall in northern Mexico, but not that far from the Rio Grande Valley. So again, everyone in the western Gulf of Mexico, keep an eye on this just in case there are some moving pieces. I talked to you about just a few of them here. And depending on how those pan out over the next three, four, or five days, there's uncertainty that remains. So be prepared and keep this on your radar. Have a hurricane plan ready to go just in case. This is the time of arrival of tropical storm force winds, the earliest reasonable arrival time based on the official forecast. So in the Cayman Islands, you're talking about Wednesday evening is when these winds are first arriving. And in the Yucatan Peninsula, Thursday afternoon or Thursday evening is when you first see that arrival. And then by the time we get toward Mexico, depends on how far north it goes, could be Saturday morning, could be Saturday evening when we're seeing that final landfall coming up this weekend. So everyone be safe and have a plan just in case it comes towards you. That's going to be about it for this video. I'll do my best to have another one tomorrow, even though it's a holiday. Stay safe, everyone. Thanks for watching.